Today, fonts are just digital files, but 50 years ago, a font could look like this, a glass disk with the letters as inverted images on them. And one of these disks could replace all the type cases of metal type in one of these cabinets you can see behind me. And today I am at the Printing Museum Pavillon Presse in Germany and we will take a look at the machine in which such a font was being used. When we think about typography and typesetting today, two techniques usually come to mind. The first is letterpress, used since the days of Gutenberg in the 15th century. You have a physical letter with a raised surface, you put ink on it and then you press the letter on paper to create a print. But today we usually use desktop publishing where the letters are stored as mathematical outline description. But between letterpress and desktop publishing, there was another technique that is often forgotten – phototypesetting. It was used from the middle of the 20th century until the 1980s and in many regards it acted as a bridge technology between letterpress and desktop publishing. The photosetter was the first successful phototypesetting machine to produce type on photographic paper or film in quantity. A camera replaced the metal pot in the old line casting machine. Type characters were now photographed individually instead of being cast in metal. The conventional linotype mold or mat was replaced by a negative. Phototype setting basically works like creating photographic prints from a negative. There is a light source, a negative, and a light sensitive paper or film. And in the case of phototype setting, the negative is just an image of a letter, and you expose one letter at a time until the text is complete. Phototype setting fonts could have very different shapes and sizes, like a long plastic strip or a small plate with the letters in a table layout. But machines like the diatype used disks because they could easily be shifted and rotated inside a phototype setting machine to reach a certain letter. The dial type can only hold one font at a time, so when you want to switch the font, we have to open the back side of the machine and replace the font manually. These fonts can hold 190 characters, so the possible character set is similar to the 8-bit encodings that were used later in the early days of desktop publishing. The letters on the disks have a size of 12 points, but the machine can scale the letters between 4 and 36 points. And that was a significant change in comparison to letterpress where you needed a set of physical letters for each size you wanted to use. Before we can start typesetting with the diatype, we first have to put in the photographic film or paper. To do that, we open the flap at the front and remove a cassette which holds the film or paper. We take it into a dark room so the film or paper doesn't get exposed to daylight, but once the paper or film is in the cassette and the cassette is closed again, we can then insert it into the machine in daylight. So the light will travel from the back of the machine through one letter of the font disk, then through lenses in the device, which will take care of scaling, spacing and focusing, and then it will hit the photographic film or paper through this opening of the cassette here. The cassette will move from left to right inside the machine and the drum inside the cassette is rotated to reach any point on the film or paper. Of course the size of the cassette limits the size of the columns you can create, but this machine wasn't meant to set things like newspapers or large books anyway. It was used for ads, for forms, tables and things like that. To pick a letter there is a plate on the front of the machine which shows all the characters of the font. The plate can easily be swapped if we want to use a font with a different character set. And then we just 
pick a line with a handle on the left side of the machine. This moves the disc up and down. The pistol grip used with the right hand rotates the disc and selects a specific letter on the selected ring of the font disc. And a simple push of the button then automatically exposes the selected letter on the film and moves the film according to the width of the letter in the selected type size. Exposing one letter takes roughly one second and so an experienced operator can set thousands of characters per hour. And once the text is complete, the film or paper is then developed in a dark room and can be used to finish the page layout and then a plate for offset printing is usually created. With such a photo typesetting machine, the operator has full control over type size, line spacing, tracking, the spacing of consecutive letters and there is even a tabulator function to set tables more easily. You could also move the drum with the film or paper around freely to set more complicated things like formulas. And the machine, the type and the standing matter needed a lot less space than what was required for metal type setting. So there were quite a few advantages of machines like the dial type, but you might have already noticed a serious drawback. This is not a what you see is what you get device, because frankly, while using it, it doesn't show you anything at all. The scales on the machine can tell you where you are on the page, but that's basically it. So you had to very carefully plan and measure your text layout in advance and then you had to be equally careful while typing the text with this machine. And so once desktop publishing came along, those machines very quickly came out of use.